In the last module, we saw the basic difference between Windows and Linux as far as security domain is concerned. We also looked into the benefits of Kali Linux and in today's module, we'll be actually installing Kali Linux in a virtual machine. So I'll minimize the presentation. And here you can see I have using VMware. You can also use VirtualBox. The steps that we'll be performing will all most be similar for each of them. So I'll click on file. I'll click on new virtual machine. I'll select the typical, which is the recommended one. Here I have to select the setup file of the Kali Linux machine, which you must have downloaded. So I'll go to my software folder. I'll select the link. And here you can see I have a Kali Linux 1.0.6 AMD 64 ISO. The size of it is around 3 GB. I'll click on open. So I hope you have downloaded the ISO file from the Kali Linux website. So I'll have to name the virtual machine. I'll name it say Kali Linux install lation tutorial. It's a big name, but it's fine. Here you'll have to specify the location where the files will be installed. So I have a location which is this one. I'll copy the location and I'll paste it over here. I'll select next. You can allocate a maximum size, uh, 20 GB seems to be perfectly enough. I'll select next and basically it is showing you the configuration. Let's say it is, it has given 512 MB RAM, uh, NAT type network, etc. So what I'll do, I'll customize the hardware. I have 8 GB RAM in my laptop, so I can go to around 4 GB processor. I'll select number of processors to 2 and number of cores per processor to 2 as well because I have a pretty fast i7 based laptop. I don't need printer in my virtual machine so I'll remove the printer and these things seems fine. So I'll close the hardware and I click on finish. As soon as I click on finish, VMware will start the installation procedure for Kali Linux machine. So I'll make it to full screen and here you can see there are various options. First is the live and the fourth option is install. Fifth is graphical install. So we'll select graphical install. Now the installation procedure is very, very simple. I guess uh, much more simpler than Windows. This is the default language. It comes with a lot of languages. Uh, one of the my language is Gujarati. It comes with Gujarati as well. So I'll select English for the time being. I click on continue. Uh, the location I'll select India. Configure keyboard. We'll use American English. And it has started to load the setup file from the ISO image that we had specified. So you can even use the live version of the Kali Linux machine. So what you can do with the live version is you can directly run Kali Linux from maybe USB or DVD ROM without actually installing it. So it is showing you the host name. I'll say my Kali. You can use any host name you want. It won't create much problem. Domain name, you can just skip it. Configure network root password. I'll select password. This is basically the root password. Root is basically the administrator in the Linux machine. 
I click on continue. And you can even use LVM if you are well versed with LVM. But for the simplest installation, I'll just use uh, the entire disk. I'll just uh, click on continue, continue, and continue. Here it is asking you if you want to write changes to the disk, and I'll select yes. And it will create the partition scheme automatically. So if you are advanced users and you want to have partitions on different disks or you want to have logical volume management, then you can set it up accordingly. But for our practicals, we'll be using the simplest type of installation that we can build. So once the Kali Linux gets installed, in next module we'll be going to have an overview about uh, different tools in the Kali Linux and specific uh, to the Aircrack NG suite. So the installation will take some time. It won't take much time, but at least around 10 to 15 minutes to install. So till the time it gets installed, I'll just pause this video. Okay, so after five minutes, it showed me this option. It is asking if I am looking for a network mirror. I'll just say no for the time being. And it's configuring the package manager, which is AppGet in Debian based systems. It might take some time if your configuration is a bit slow. For me, it takes around 10 minutes to install. You can fast forward this video, it is going to be a bit long. I'll repause the video and let's come back when newer options appear. So it has asked me if I want to install the grub boot loader and I would say yes. It will also help you run multiple operating systems. And I think it's almost finished the installation part once you install it's always better to check if everything is working fine because I have seen many times when people install uh, the Kali Linux and their network interfaces are down or there is some compatibility related issues related to drivers and other things so the installation is finished and I'll do continue Hmm. I'm thinking to buy a SSD drive because my 5400 RPM hard disk is a bit slow so it does affect the performance. I mean uh, third generation i7 8GB RAM 
with a 5400 rpm hard disk drive uh, really creates bottleneck i have seen people using ssd with 4gb ram and they have much more faster installation uh, than mine alternatively i also have a usb 3.0 pen drive which is ultra fast pen drive i do not really have it right now so you'll have to bear it with the slower installation so finally installation seems to have completed it is rebooting my system and yes it is installed i'll select the first option it will boot the kernel and it should show you the authentication screen okay so you click on other and the username is root by default and the password is what you had selected in the installation screen so first time it might take some time to load and even resolution uh, is low so you can uh, set the resolution and other related things i'll go to the system settings and here there's a display it's 800 by 600 and i'll increase it to 1360 by 768 i'll click on apply and here you have a nice full screen so once again just verify if all the interfaces are up and running you can ping local host and yes it's giving you the reply so this is all about installation of kali linux one more thing by default i don't know why but the sound is disabled so you can enable the sound from here so i hope this video has been informative for you and i hope that you'll install kali linux so next module will be starting with the aircrack ng suite thank you for watching this video